All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Before I begin problem 8.3a, I want to pause here with a word of encouragement. When students are learning to do budgets, they often try to memorize all the lines on the table and they get worried about phrasing and wording and they get hung up on that. And I really want you to try to clear that notion from your brain. It would be very difficult to memorize all of the terminology and jargon that I use in preparing these budgets. What I want my students to do is remember the logic of it. So when they're preparing a production budget, it doesn't matter if they have everything in the exact same order as I do, as long as they kind of find their way to the right answer. You know, if you recall that budget, you're, uh, uh, you're, you're saying, if I'm going to make a certain amount of units, I'm if I'm going to sell a certain amount of units, rather, I need to make a certain amount of units. Okay, well, that's one thing. The amount of units I'm going to sell is the amount of units I'm going to make, plus I want to have some ending inventory left over, minus I don't need to make the beginning inventory. Now, if you did that in a funny order, or if you uh, used a slightly different terminology, that's no big deal. And you'll see in this materials purchases video, it's like a longer one of those production budgets that we just learned. So I just want to caution you at the start of this, don't get hung up on jargon and terminology. Try to logic your way through this. Try to solve it like a logic puzzle. Okay, what comes next? What logically comes next? And if you're doing it in a different order than I am, as long as you're ending up in the same spot, in my class, it's not the end of the world. Now, you should speak with your professor about it, but thats I feel that really strongly, that order here, it, it it matters somewhat as long as you're getting the right answer though that's what matters more as long as you're uh, you know laying things out in a reasonable way and, and coming at it with a, a good thought process you should get most if not all of the marks even if your um, uh, words you use don't exactly match or even if your order doesn't exactly match that found in my videos or that found in your profs solution key again if you're my student just know that's true and if you're in a class with a different instructor i would ask them you know if i do these slightly out of order as long as i end up in the right place is that okay with you so again at this point when students are working through these budgets they start to lose heart and i would say please don't lose heart okay we're going to jump into the regularly scheduled program now sorry i just wanted to get that in before we began Let's examine problem 8.3a, a materials purchases budget. So in our last video, we learned a production budget. So if I know how many units I have to make, of course, that can inform my ordering of my materials. So uh, this one has us making leather bags. Well, okay, if we make these fake leather bags, we're going to need the material to make these faux leather bags. Uh, so. Uh, production budget feeds into our materials purchases. Let's read on. Shane Company manufactures full leather bags. Each bag takes 0.5 yards of material. The material costs $5 per yard. The company had 1,500 yards of material on hand at the beginning of, the, of January and required enough ending monthly materials to be on hand to meet 10% of the following month's production requirements. So we don't want to run out of yards of full leather. We want to have 10% of the next a month's needs kind of on hand. Very similar to a production budget, actually, if you think about the, the phrasing of that. The company's production budget follows. So they prepared a production budget. That's what we learned to do in problem 8.2. And those are, this is the numbers coming out of that. It says the company expects to produce 40,000 units in April. Obviously, we'll have something to do with this. And our beginning inventory actually was stated up here, and that's going to be a useful number. But let's begin, as we begin all budgets, with a three-line title. Shang Company. This is a materials purchases budget 
And this is for the quarter ended March 31st. Okay, we've got ourselves a beautiful title. As always, we're going to have the months as our heading. Jan, Feb, March, and quarter. And our first line is just our production. That sort of given numbers up here, right? January, February, March, quarter. So again, if I'm going to make 30,000 faux leather bags, that's a starting point. Okay, now we know each bag takes half a yard of material. So let's figure out how many yards I need, required material. So again, required production is 30,000 full leather bags. Each bag takes half a yard of material. We're interested in materials here. So how many yards of material? Well, again, uh, required material per unit is half a yard right so then my required material in yards in this case 30,000 times 0.5 I need 15,000 yards of material to satisfy January's production 35,000 times 0.5, I need 17,500 yards of material. 38,000 times 0.5, I need 19,000 yards of material. 103 times 0.5, what is that? 51,500 yards of material. So again, it's like, you know, if I know each batch of cookie takes cookies takes 10 eggs and I'm making 100 batches, well, that's 1,000 eggs, right, is an example. So that's what we're doing here. We're saying I'm making 30,000 of these bags. I need 50,000 yards of material, 15,000 yards of material. Okay, so not only do I need that, right, if I'm going to make 30,000 faux leather bags, not only do I need the 15,000 yards of material, I also need some left over for next period. And the question it said, we want ending monthly materials to be on hand to meet 10% of the following month's production needs. So I'm going to need 17,500 uh, yards of material in February. It means I want 10% of that extra sitting on hand in January so I don't run out. So very similar, again, to a production budget. I'm going to add my desired ending materials inventory. I'll just call it desired ending materials here. And it's 10% of the next period. So 10% of 17,500 is 1750. So our total required materials, our total material needs rather, is 16,750. Now, we have some materials to begin the quarter. It said we have 1,500 yards of materials on hand at the start of the quarter. I obviously don't need to buy those. So I'm going to deduct beginning materials inventory. And in this case, that was 1,500 because I don't need to buy those. So I'm going to need to purchase 15,250 yards of material. So required materials, I mean, to be purchased could fill in here. I, I just don't have the room to write it, but required materials to be purchased 15,250 yards. Now, if we have enough information, we would like to use a dollar value. And indeed, in fact, the question says, prepare materials budget, provide both the number of yards and dollar value of the inventory to be purchased. So again, required materials, maybe I should put this in here just because the uh, these lines look the same, but this is required materials to be purchased and it's 15,250 yards now in dollars material costs five dollars a yard so cost 
per yard five and that's going to be five across the board when we when we get to it for these other ones 15,250 times five 15,000 times five is 75 so 76,250 that is our total materials cost for January and again, in the context of what we've been doing, right? And the first budget we learned was a sales budget and a cash collections budget. Well, this is gonna be money out. We're gonna spend $76,000 in materials in January. Do I have it? Well, if I look at my cash collections, that can tell me if I have enough money coming in to pay the inventory purchase bill. I sure hope I do. Uh, let's continue on though. Let's do February. The desired ending materials for February is gonna be 90% Oh, sorry, 10%, pardon me, 10% of the following month. So 10% of March is 1,900, 17,500 minus 1,900 or plus, oh my goodness, 17,500 plus 1,900 is 19,400. We're going to deduct the uh, beginning materials. Now the beginning materials for February is the same as the ending materials for January. 19,400 minus 1750 means we need to purchase 17,650 yards of material in February. And again, hopefully we can get that $5 price still. Well, hopefully it's cheaper. The total amount we're expecting to spend on inventory or in, on materials rather for uh, March is $88,000 for February, my goodness. Let's move on to March. Our desired ending materials inventory for March. It's going to be 10% of April. Well, we don't have April, but we can figure it out. The company thinks they're going to make 40,000 units. Now, if you took 10% from here, you'd be wrong. Why? Because it's 10% of the yards of material. 40,000 units times 0.5, just like we did at the top here, where we said everything was multiplied by 0.5 means it's going to take 20,000 yards of material and we're taking 10% of that. So it's 2000. So, okay. We're going to want to have 2000 yards of material on hand at the end of March to satisfy April's needs. 19,000 plus 2000 is 21,000. Our beginning materials was 1900. So the ending materials for the month before becomes the beginning material for this month. So February 28th is the same as March 1st. 21,000 minus 1,900 is 19,100. 19,100 times five is $95,500. Okay, this was a bit of a longer journey than the first few uh, budgets we've done, but we're almost there. We got to do the for the quarter, which again is similar to a totals column, but it's not quite a totals column, is it? Our desired ending material for the quarter is, well, the last day of the quarter was March 31st. So that's the end of the quarter. So we just take the March data for that one. We just say, okay, it's 2000. 51.5 plus 2000 is 53.5. Now you'll notice it doesn't total, right? If you add from left to right here, that doesn't work. If you add from left to right uh, for total material needs, that doesn't total. It's just not a total. It's for the quarter. Uh, the beginning inventory for the quarter, uh, the beginning materials was 1,500. That leaves us 52,000, 53.5 minus 1,500 is 52,000. At a cost of $5 per yard, 52 times five is $260,000. And at that point, we've done it. We have prepared in good form a materials purchases budget. There we have it. I hope this video was very helpful to you. And if it was, I hope you'll help me too. I'm chasing, I'm chasing 100,000 subscribers and I hope you'll help me on that journey. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.